As someone who works a lot at the computer, I've tested a few pretty unique productivity keyboards. For me, I found that the keyboard that I use actually has a pretty big impact on your workflow, not just for ergonomics, but also for keyboard shortcuts and the unique features of each keyboard. So in this video, I wanna share with you six best productivity keyboards that I've tested. The keyboards on here range from under $100 all the way to $500. I'll share with you the one that I've been using the most lately, but you can see which keyboard is most suited for your needs based on what you do. All right, but before we get started, make sure to smash the like button and subscribe. So the first keyboard is probably one of the most unique ones and it's a ergonomic split keyboard. There's a growing trend of split keyboards and there's more and more companies that make them, but this one specifically is called the Keyball 39. This was actually recommended to me by Ryuhama, so shout out to her last year. And it's one of the most fun keyboards that I've tested. You can either buy all the parts and assemble it yourself, or you can buy it pre-made for a little bit of a markup. The unique thing about this keyboard is that there is a ball on the right side called a trackball, and you can basically control your cursor with this. So that means if you're doing work like coding, typing, or just browsing on the computer, you never have to move your hands back to the mouse. Your hands always stay in this neutral position. And because the split keyboard allows you to move your hand apart, your shoulders are in a more ergonomic position as well. There definitely was a pretty big learning curve with using this keyboard. I think it took me about a month to actually really get used to using this keyboard. But after that, it's been really fun to use this keyboard. With split keyboards, some people actually switch to a completely different typing system. So typically what you're used to is probably the QWERTY layout, which is the default layout. But there's another layout called the Dvorak layout, which is supposedly way more ergonomic. It's suited for a split keyboard and it lets you type way faster. But uh, when I looked into it, it seemed like too much of a time commitment to actually learn. But if any of you guys have tried it before, I'm definitely curious to hear how that is. The thing that I did set up on this keyboard is something called Home Row Mods, which actually one of you guys told me about. And basically what it is, is that you can make the center row of the keyboard into keyboard shortcuts. So for a D, for example, the letter D, if you just press it once, it's a letter D, but if you hold down, it acts as the command key. And you can also do that for control and alt. So it just makes it a little bit more ergonomic. Another thing that I did was that I put some keyboard shortcuts on the right side of the keyboard so that I can use and navigate my computer completely with one hand. I can even type because I set up a dictation shortcut to be able to basically type and browse the internet without having to use my left hand. And that just kind of frees up my left hand to do whatever. The only downside about this keyboard is that there is no kickstand. So over time, the wrist is kind of in this unnatural and flat position. And that's where this next product comes in, which are these wrist rests. So I use these wrist rests made by this company called Delta Hub, who's kindly sponsoring this video. These are called the Carpio wrist rests. So for anyone that types or uses the computer for long periods of time, you might notice that you might have some wrist soreness or issues. Over time, this can actually develop into more serious issues like carpal tunnel syndrome, which is something you definitely want to avoid. And what this wrist rest does is that it just puts your hand in a way more ergonomic position to use the keyboard. This is really nice if you use a split keyboard, but it also works with any other keyboard as well. These ones are super high quality. They feel really nice to use and they also make a lot of other cool products. If you're interested, you can check out the link in the description below and you can also get a discount. But back to this keyboard. So one thing you'll notice with this specific split keyboard is that it's super compact and there's not that many keys on there. I mentioned earlier that this is the key 39 and that's because there's only 39 keys on this keyboard. The way you access things like the function layer or numbers is that you have to hold down one of the keys and press it. So if you hold down this key on the left, then you can press the one, two, three, four, five on the top row. Another thing that's useful about split keyboards is that it really frees up a lot of space on your desk. So what a lot of people do is that they put something in between their keyboard. For me, I usually put my journal because I do update and write in it every day. But I've also seen people put an iPad in the middle for writing stuff down. Because the split keyboard also has a trackball, you also don't even need a mouse at your desk. I will say if you do video editing or design work, it's a little bit hard to use it with the trackball. So this is really more suited for people to do any sort of typing or coding. When I was traveling Japan earlier this year as a digital nomad, this was an essential part of my mobile workstation. So I basically have this keyboard on the left and right side of my computer, and I'll have my laptop propped up at eye level in the middle. And that's how I work. This keyboard costs anywhere between $150 to $400, depending on the keycaps that you use, if you want it to be wireless, and if you want it to be pre-built. For me, I got mine off of Mercari, which is a Japanese site. 
So this Nix keyboard is super unique in that there's a built-in Pomodoro timer and clock. So this is the Nomad keyboard. This display off to the left basically has a few built-in apps. It has a Tamagotchi pet, it has a Pomodoro timer, and a clock. This is originally a Kickstarter that I backed, and I think the idea is super cool. You can customize the knobs on this keyboard. So the one on the right, I have it to be the volume knob, and you can have the left to be specific to different applications. Like for example, if you work in editing software, you can have it move the playhead or expand or contract the playhead. I think what this company is doing is pretty cool in that they're actually trying to innovate the keyboard. For me personally, I didn't find myself using the Pomodoro timer or clock that much. If you've seen some videos on this channel, I still prefer using the analog Pomodoro timer on my desk. But they also make another keyboard that is pretty cool, which is the next keyboard I wanna talk about. And that is the Creator Micro. This keyboard is geared for people that do any sort of creative or design work. Like if you work in Figma, Framer, Adobe Premiere, Final Cut, this keyboard is built for that. It's obviously not meant to replace your full on keyboard. Like there's only like 12 keys on here. It's meant to be used as another keyboard off to the left or right side. It's a pretty small and compact form factor. It comes in a few colors. The one I have is just the black blank one. And I think the most popular one is the one that is the Figma colors. I have used it a little bit for Figma when I was making these wireframes, but I mostly got this to see if it could help me edit videos way faster. I set up a bunch of custom shortcuts for working in Premiere, but uh, let me just show you. This is my timeline for a video I'm editing, and this is the Creator Micro. So if I turn the knob, I can go through the different playheads. I can click these left and right buttons to jump to the next one. See, I can move left and right like that. I can jump through them like that. And uh, I can expand, expand or, see I can expand or contract the timeline or click to reset. I can make a full on cut like anywhere. If I just click this one, it'll make a cut right there. And I also have a bunch of other smaller ones here. So if you do any sort of editing or design work or you have macros that you need knobs for, I would recommend checking this keyboard out. You can get this for, I think about $150. The next keyboard is probably the one that I've used for the longest and it's the Happy Hacking Professional 2. So I've used this for over 10 years. I got this back in high school on a trip to Japan and I use it all throughout college for my computer science degree and also through a few jobs. It's made by this Japanese company called Fujitsu and it's designed for coding. That's why it's called the Happy Hacking Keyboard. Even though it's made of plastic, I think that the build quality is actually really good because even after 10 years, it still looks pretty new to me. At the time, I got the blank version with no labels and I'm really glad I got this. At first, it was kind of hard to get used to, but over time, I found myself learning how to type without looking at my hands and I started to type way faster. And I basically was able to increase my typing speed by a lot pretty passively. And because it's a super compact layout, I also learned a bunch of keyboard shortcuts which have helped me out a lot. If you do any sort of coding, I definitely would recommend this keyboard and also the blank version because then you can learn how to type without looking for certain symbols. And also it's nice that nobody else can use your computer. The next keyboard is one of the cheapest keyboards on this list and it's the Lenovo ThinkPad keyboard. This keyboard is super low profile. It's satisfying and silent to type on. But my favorite thing about this keyboard is this red dot. So with this red dot, you can control the cursor. And it basically just makes it a little bit more convenient where you don't have to move between your mouse and your keyboard. This is probably my favorite keyboard right now and is the one that I use the most. I think this is really nice for anything that's related to general work on the computer, like emails, writing stuff or even coding. Because it's super thin and light, this fits in my backpack and I can use this anywhere. This one is the wireless one. It costs under $100. But if you got the wired one, I think it costs only $69, which is pretty good for what you're getting. The only issue I have with this is that I had one of the keys break and so it would repeat if I just hit it once but they gave me a replacement. So this one is the replacement one, but after a few months, the same thing happened with this one and I'm too lazy to get it replaced again. This is also probably the most silent keyboard on this list so far. So if you take a lot of Zoom meetings, I would recommend using a keyboard like this because nobody can hear you typing if you take notes and you can also use a computer secretly because nobody will see you moving your mouse. The last keyboard on this list is basically if the Happy Hacking keyboard and the ThinkPad keyboard had a baby and it's the HHKB Studio, also made by the Happy Hacking Company. So it basically has the exact same layout as the Happy Hacking Keyboard with a track point in the middle. It also has two hidden features on the left and right side where you can scroll 
horizontally or vertically just by swiping on the sides. I would definitely say that this has a way better build quality than some of the other keyboards that I showed. And this also just combines my favorite features about the Happy Hand keyboard and ThinkPad keyboard. Even the trackball in the middle, I find this to be a lot more precise than the ThinkPad keyboard, even though they were the ones who invented it. So if you have a higher budget and you want something with a better build quality that combines some of the other features of the other keyboards, then I would recommend this one. And yeah, that's really the only downside of this keyboard, in my opinion, which is the price. This retails for about $450. So among this list, I think the best bang for buck for me personally is the ThinkPad keyboard. Fun and ergonomic wise, I would say that the Keyball 39, the split keyboard is probably the best and most fun one to use. It feels like I'm in a spaceship whenever I use it. And I also have way better posture in my shoulder and wrist. But yeah, I'm really curious what keyboards you guys use. Definitely let me know in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next video. Let's get it.